So good morning, Reverend Alice. Good morning to my beloved Center for Spiritual Living Santa Cruz community, wherever you might be. Um, and good morning to anyone and everyone else who might be listening wherever you are and whenever you might catch this. Um, I would like to begin, as always, even though I'm in my own home right now, and you're probably in yours, um, I want to begin, as I always do whenever I speak to you, with taking three breaths together. So wherever and perhaps whenever you are, if you would right now just with me, breathe out and take a deep breath in and let go. Take another deep breath in. And let go. And one more time, taking a deep breath in and letting go. And so this is an interesting moment. It is such a fascinating opportunity for me to step out of my own comfort zone and join our community, join in spiritual community, in this new way of doing things. And the last couple of weeks, I'm sure that all of us have been experiencing our life is not moving in the way that we're used to. That every one of us has been asked in some level to stop, to stop life as usual. And there is this pandemic, there is this thing called coronavirus happening in the world, which is an effect, which is something that all of us are experiencing together. And it's very real. And I experience it as being very real. I've gone, I've been in my home now for a couple weeks, and I've left my house about once a week to go to the grocery store. And when I do, I put on my rubber gloves, and I've got my mask, and I'm out to like go be protected in the world. And it seems very real. And yet, for me, all of this suiting up, all of this collective awareness on one thing, this collective behavior that we're all engaging in has really got me thinking. And I am someone who is always asking, where is the good in whatever circumstances in front of me? And as I've been watching the numbers globally rise as this thing has been spreading around us, as it has collected all of our attention, no matter where we are, no matter what we were doing before this, it seems that almost all of humanity is paying attention to this thing right now. And I find it to be, in a way, almost beautiful. When I look at the map and when I look at what's happening, that on some level there is this thing showing up in our world that is reminding all of us how deeply interconnected we actually are, how deeply connected we are to each other, and how deeply connected we are to the planet and to the ecosystem and all of the ways that things on this earth interact with each other, that we are all connected. And we're seeing it through the manifestation of this virus just spreading rapidly. And it's, it's a demonstration of how truly connected our global society really is. And it's, a, it's fascinating to me to be in this place where we can see that we are all so connected that we now have to remain apart from each other. And there's something almost comical on that to me. It almost feels like the comic relief when I look at the universe from this sort of dehumanized way and try to see the good, the law, the evolution, the movement. I say there has to be something here. And if you've listened to me talk before, you know that I am fascinated by the work of Lynn McTaggart and books like The Power of Eight and The Intention Experiment that tell us that any time a group of people focus on the same thing at the same time, some sort of neurological supra network becomes created. Some sort of greater connection becomes available. Some sort of group mind is able to be tapped into that allows us to recognize and feel and perceive and know the oneness that is life pulsing and breathing and moving through all of us. And so what if we allow this moment in history that none of us have ever experienced before no one who is alive has ever experienced anything like this on a global level. And all of humanity is focusing right now on an idea. And if, a, if there is even some truth to this idea that when we're all focused, something more becomes available. 
someone sometime a long time ago said, where two or more are gathered, there I am also. And what Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth meant by that is when any two of us or more focus together, when we gather together intentionally on an idea, that their greatest creative poten- greater creative potential emerges. And something that is greater than the sum of the parts becomes available. Many years ago, I studied some of the work of Barbara Marks Hubbard, who is one of the great minds in the noetic sciences and in the sort of futurist ideology. And she has a work, a body of work called Humanity Ascending. And in that body of work, she tells a story of a vision that she had of some day in the future where there would be this collective moment of crisis, a collective moment of pain that all of humanity would participate in. And it would be in that collective fear, in that collective loss, in that collective moment of discomfort that something more emerged within us and a, and a collective heart within humanity became available to all of us. And so I want to invite us to look at what's happening in the world with a deep sense of hope and with a deep sense of possibility that what if this is the wake up and the shake up that we all actually need to stop, look and listen at who we are and what we're doing and what our values are. Most of humanity has been told to go to our room on some level and think about life. Think about what we've done. Think about what we're doing. Think about who we are. And I can't stop but think that perhaps this is Mother Earth. This is life itself screaming out and asking us to look at how we interact with each other, to look at how we interact with the Earth. And I continuously see beauty in this because for the first time in who knows how long, the skies in China are blue that Europe's carbon and greenhouse emissions have gone down by half in the last month. That all of us stopping what we're doing, stopping going to work, stopping the busyness, stopping the monotony, stopping the cycle, the wheel that we've all been participating in. And suddenly the the sky is becoming bluer and it just so happens to be the beginning of spring and I open my door and I see flowers and I see birds and my garden is bursting with life. And I can't help but be reminded that every one of us has been asked to stop, to step away from the busyness and to go on retreat, to go within, to think about what really matters to us. And what would it be like if we all took the next 21 days to make some new habits, to forge some new ideas, to think about new ways of doing things, So that when all of society goes back online, we don't just jump back into exactly how things were before. Because perhaps this break can give us all some perspectives. Perhaps this break can give us all the opportunity to realize that there is a world that is screaming to come into existence. And I know that so many of us can feel it. And it's not the world that we've all been participating in and that something has to change. And one of my teachers once told me to learn to listen to the whispers in our hearts before the shout and the smack come from God or the universe or life itself. And I feel like the earth has been whispering and getting louder for years and asking us to pay attention to how we are living here. And this is, perhaps one of the first shouts or the first slaps that we're getting. And this is our opportunity to pay attention. This is our opportunity to build a new world. This is our opportunity to build new perspectives within ourselves. And really see what's important to us. Really ask. What is important to me? What is important in my life? What are the things that I truly want to dedicate my time to? Because what if you didn't have to go to work? And what if you didn't have a constraint of time? What would you do with that time? Because it just so happens that that time is now. 
what would it look like to take the next short period of time that we've all been gifted and dive deep into our passions, to dive deep into the things that interest us, to dive deep into the solutions to the problems that we see in the world and see what creative solutions come out of this time of rest, come out of this time of introspection. On a call we have at the center every day, someone said the other day that this is a time of cocooning and that what happens in a cocoon is a whole lot of meltdown. And as all of us are cooped up in our homes with our loved ones and the people that we hold dear, this is also a time of challenge. This is a time of trial. And I know that there's a lot of people who are isolated right now and a lot of people who are alone. And as someone who's dealt with depression in my, in my life, I know that that can be one of our biggest enemies. And so to embrace the meltdown on some level, to know that all of us are gonna move through the anxiety and the fear and the depression and the sadness and the boredom and all the things that come with this time that we're living in. But that's the opportunity to dive into spiritual practice. That's the opportunity to reach out and call someone. That's the opportunity to open up an idea that you haven't been willing to look at and maybe explore it for a while because you've got time. And I really believe, like I, I keep saying, but I, I really believe that this is a time for us to, to look into the sacred, to look for the sacred, to find it in ourselves, to find it in our homes, to find it in our individual relationships, to find it in the technology that allows us to remain connected, to look for the beauty of life. Because I really believe that life is trying to send all of humanity a message right now and that there is something in this experience for us. And that if we all take this opportunity to look for that something, then something beyond anything that any one of us could have imagined can emerge from all of us collectively. And I believe that this is a unique moment in history. The world has never been connected as connected as it is now. We have never had the potential and the possibility and the technology and the power to make change as we have right now. But this is a beautiful moment for all of us. And so I want to read you something that I have read at our center before, and it is a statement that I read every day. And it comes from the fifth sacred thing written by Starhawk. And it is sort of, it is called the declaration of the fourth sacred thing. And it's a reminder to us to look to the earth, to look to life, to look to the world around us as an opportunity to live in sacred and spiritual practice, to live in love. And so Starhawk writes, the earth is a living conscious being. And in company with cultures of many different times and places, we name these things as sacred air, fire, water, and earth. Whether we see them as the breath, energy, blood, and body of the mother, or as the blessed gifts of our creator, or simply as symbols of interconnected systems that sustain life, we know that nothing can live without them. To call these things sacred is to say that they have a value beyond their usefulness for human ends that they themselves become the standards by which our acts, our economics, our laws, and our purposes must be judged. No one has the right to appropriate them or profit from them at the expense of others. Any government that fails to protect them forfeits its legitimacy. All people, all living things are part of the earth's life and so are sacred. No one of us stands higher or lower than any other. Only justice can assure balance. Only ecological balance can sustain freedom. Only in freedom can that fifth sacred thing that we call spirit flourish in its full diversity. To honor the sacred is to create conditions in which nourishment, sustenance, habitat, knowledge, freedom, and beauty can thrive. To honor the sacred is to make love possible. To this, we dedicate our curiosity, our will, our courage, our silences, and our voices. To this, we dedicate our lives.
take a breath. I read you that statement because I read that every day. And I really believe that the universe is a place of cause and effect. I believe that Ernest Holmes teaches us that there are laws of the universe, laws of mind, laws of reality, laws of nature that establish the order and the balance and the beauty of life itself and that we can live in harmony with these laws when we participate with them from a place of sacredness. And I believe that this statement, that this talk to this conversation today is a reminder for all of us. Perhaps what we are experiencing is an effect and the cause has been our choices. And the cause has been how we view the world, how we participate with our natural resources and with cultures around the planet. Perhaps what we are experiencing is simply the cause and effect reality of the world that we live in. And if we see the effect and we reflect and we find that each one of us is in some way the cause, then what cause do we want to be? What do we want to stand for? What do we want to create? What world do we want to live in? And so I want to invite you to find hope in this time, to find an opportunity for reflection, for spiritual practice, for connection, to remember that there is something greater that lives in all of us and it connects us all to each other, to the earth, to life itself. And so let us be in that awareness and let us be the ones who put into this collective time of focus a new idea. Ernest Holmes tells us that trained thought is much more powerful than untrained thought. And those of us who have trained our minds to know the power of our heart, have the opportunity to be of great influence in this moment. So participate with an open heart and an open mind. Stay safe and stay healthy. And remember that there is great magic afoot and something wonderful is seeking to express through all of this. And I know that. Let us be part of it. And so with that, take another deep breath in. And if it's comfortable for you, wherever you are, close your eyes and just breathe again. And know with me that there is only one life, that this life is perfect, that this life is the life of God, and that this life is unfolding right here and right now as everyone and everything that is happening on this planet that this one life is expressing as the force of evolution, as the energy that shines the sun, as the light behind each one of our eyes, as the power that beats our heart. This one lives and breathes in all things. And so let us take the opportunity that has been gifted to us all to find peace in the stillness, to find a break, to find a moment to reflect, to look within, to ask the deep questions, to explore the things we haven't had time to explore. Let us be in the opportunity and in the possibility and in the wonder of what is and what could be so that we be the ones who put into mind the greatest potential ideas so that we lift all of human consciousness into a new plane of idea into a new plane of willingness. Let us participate in the creation that is available to us through this moment of collective concentration. By remaining in spiritual practice, by remaining in gratitude, by remaining in a state of celebration that life is always leading us towards a greater good. And remember that we can surrender to a power that is greater than we are, that is ever seeking to express good in the universe and always available to live and breathe as each one of us. And so let us be in that awareness, breathing in and letting go. And so it is.